get a new camera. Better quality pictures. Lots of different options on camera angles. What a Pandora's box that is. Welcome to this week's Table Talk. Ooh, it's a bit Peter Oxley, isn't it? Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff. My name is Jason, and if you're a new subscriber, then a massive welcome. This is Table Talk. We do it every week, and we talk about what's gone on in the week, what's been happening on the old modelling bench, what's coming up, and what some of our longer-term plans are. We'll talk about pretty much all of that in this episode as well. Um, if you're a long-standing subscriber, a massive, massive thank you for... Um, uh, nice to see you again and thanks for all the support I've had over the last few weeks. It's been awesome. I'd also like to thank those of you that took the time out to go over to Aussie Trekkie and um, give him a like and give him a subscribe uh, and encourage him to do the things that he loves regardless of what other people might think. Now I had, unfortunately when I put that video up, I got a couple of comments that that weren't negative particularly, but were not really understanding. And um, Aussie Trek has just put another video out. Um, he uh, on uh, Wednesday, I I think it was. Um, and in there, he says, you know, there's a reason why he focuses on the negative. And the truth of the matter is, we're all different, and nobody knows what goes on inside people that you're viewing and you know I watch YouTube channels and I don't know uh, what what's going on in their personal lives what their mental states are you know and, and all that sort of stuff so you have to just take the content for what it is and if you don't like it don't watch it it's that simple you don't need to comment on it you don't need to point out that you don't like it you just need to move on and I, I think most people in the in the community, I think someone said, oh, good 70%. It's, it's more than that. For, for every negative comment, I get hundreds of positive comments, and it must be the same for, for, for other people as well. It appears that the larger you get, the more um, people you come across that, that, that appear to be negative. But at the end of the day, what happens when someone's negative to me is as soon as I see that they're being negative, I stop reading. So I don't read the rest of whatever their diatribe might be. Um, um, I delete them, uh, their comment, and I, uh, I forget the terminology that YouTube use. I think it's hide them from the channel, which means that they can watch my videos and grumble away as much as they like, but they can't actually make a comment on it. Um, which, you know, is a nice compromise. I don't have the time to do what uh, Nigel does and screen all of them. Um, so, you know, you just have to try and focus on the positives and there's always a lot more positives. So one of my positives has been a new camera. Blimey, that doesn't half open a can of worms, doesn't it? So um, I, I said to you guys earlier on that, um, this year I was aiming to get another camera with the revenue that we get from from the uh, channel that isn't then spent on kits and, and products. So what basically happened is um, I've managed to uh, bring that purchase forward. I, I was thinking I might be able to get it end of the summer. Um, and if you watch the unboxing, you know I got a really good deal on it, basically a, a third off. And when the camera's costing £1,500, a third off is, is a considerable sum. So, yeah, I, I, it's a good purchase, you know. Um, and, I, and I'd like to say at this point a massive thank you to uh, Ron um, of Model Ship fame, who, who gave me a couple of pointers in, in the first interest, in the first sort of uh, start of my thought process in this, um, which, I mean, he's not been involved in choosing the camera at all, but from the, the, the one or two comments that he said about which way to go, that set me off in the right direction and, and ultimately got to that, that camera. And I'm pleased to say on the unboxing, he put his seal of approval on it. Um, uh, he said it had some professional features, which is great because Canon sell it as a professional camera. Um, so, yeah, so far, um, the more I learn about it, the less complex it gets. 
um, and so far so good. So it, it's quite a big learning curve though, not just learning the camera, never had a camcorder before, um, uh, and some of the nuances are of that. But I, I put a video up, uh, the Aussie Trekkie uh, v video, uh, and recorded it on the new camera, and it definitely looked sharper. I thought I'd recorded it in 4K. Uh, you know, the camera says on the side 4K. I assume it's recording in 4K. Uh, and I've been re reliably informed by several people that it wasn't in 4K. Um, and then when I've gone through the manual, so, you know, so, someone left um, a, a comment and said a, a lot of stuff, almost all of it I didn't understand, but he summed it up at the bottom, so this isn't 4K. All right, okay, so there must be a setting on the camera. So there's some items in the cam on the camera menu that are greyed out and that I can't get into. So I guess they become ungrayed out and accessible when you change different settings, but I can't work out what those settings are. So at the moment, I'm doing the best I can. Um, so yeah, so that's the first sort of can of worms. You've got to get your head around it, and that takes time. So bear with me, we will master it. Um, then the second can of worms was a uh, camera angle. So I had a tripod, I was fairly confident it would mount on the tripod and would be okay, and, and sure enough, it did mount on the tripod, um, and it was okay-ish. Uh, and the problem was um, filming my videos. So I've been filming for quite some time now with, with that suspended, sort of that level, filming downwards. Uh, with the camcorder on the tripod, the camcorder was here, side on, um, and flipped on its side so that we had the rectangular landscape view going widthways across the desk, not not the depth of the desk. Um, but you were closer here and farther away here, and it, it just was niggling me. Couldn't get it right. So um, we bought a new tripod, um, and in a minute I'll show you it. Um, the the difference with this tripod is and it, you know it, it was not expensive as tripods go but certainly not cheap as tripods go it's around about 100 pounds um uh what this one does though i mean you can turn it into a monopod uh, i'm never going to use it like that I, I wouldn't have thought um but it has a boom so the the uh leg in the middle uh the, the center column that does the height adjustment you can bring it up to the top and then you can hinge it and it booms across like, like where my arm is. So I can do overhead again. Um, so that, that, that took some time. So that was, that was the first item to pop out of Pandora's box with the camera um, that actually I needed a new tripod set up. Um, also, um, it, it's a, a lot more difficult to access the, um, the on off switches. I mean, there's two of them, um, but with the camera that way down, all of the controls are facing that way, not towards me. I can flick the screen towards me, but everything else is facing that way. So I'd already planned to get a remote control, so I have a remote control. So I can do, um, I can be Peter Oxley and zoom in and out and stuff like that. And actually it works really well. Um, I've done some filming of my uh, B17 um, this week on it. And yeah, um, I, I can, um, I'm still, Still sometimes getting out of focus. The autofocus isn't as quick as I would like it to be, but I have a habit of bringing things up and it's an old habit for the iPad. Um, and actually this focuses more slowly than the iPad. But there's a little thing you can do. You can touch the screen on the thing you want it to focus in and it'll focus and track that, which works quite well. So I'm still getting used to the fact that I need to give it a moment to catch up with me. Um, but um, from the remote control, I've got access to the, the, the key buttons that I need. So I can take a photograph, um, I can zoom in, I can zoom out at different speeds. I can do press it lightly and go slow or press it hard and go fast. Um, and I can switch record on and off with this little button at the bottom. So, you know, I, this was, uh, it wasn't, wasn't cheap or wasn't expensive, 20 something quid, something like that. Um, and it has a little built-in clip, so I can clip it onto um, all sorts of 
different things. It's supposed to clip on the arm on uh, the adjusting arm on your tripod. Only my new tripod doesn't have one. Um, but actually, I I need it right near me on the desk, so it means that I don't have to get up and reach and switch off. So um, that's a, a, a nice little uh, feature as well. So um, we, we've got that, um, we've got the tripod, um, but then the next issue is um, the, the format. So as I'm re reading through the manual, I can change the format from MP4 to something else. I forget the name of it. It's all just random letters. Um, so that seems to give me um, better definition, um, uh, pixel definition. So I swapped it to that and I recorded uh, some stuff for that. Um, and then I took it off the uh, memory stick, which was another thing. Uh, <laughs> come back to memory sticks, um, uh, memory cards I should say. Um, uploaded it um, onto my uh, computer and then tried to put it in iMovie. So iMovie is the free software that you get with all uh, Macs and um, it wouldn't accept that file type. <laughs> so it will accept MP4 I think. So I'm recording this in MP4 for convenience right now. Um, and then I remembered that, that Ron um, uses uh, DaVinci and uh, DaVinci Resolve, I think it's called. And um, he said there's a free version and a paid for version. Paid for version is about 500 quid. Uh, he has the paid for version. Um, but I looked at the free version and, uh, you know, anything that Ron uses as a, as a bit of a filming buff, um, then that, that's as good as a recommendation for me. So I downloaded it. The free version it's massively more complex than than um, iMovie so it's going to take me time to get used to it and um, uh, Ron has very kindly given me a couple of links to um, uh, videos tutorial videos that, that he's used so that's going to take time so how do I get around the fact that I've got some stuff recorded in a different format and can't put it in well what I found was if I put it into DaVinci and then uploaded it from DaVinci, not doing anything to it, not editing it, just uploading it. So I was doing a little bit of playing around with an old old bit of clip. But when I uploaded it, um, it um, I could then put it into iMovie. So at the moment, what I'm doing with the, the, the stuff that I've recorded, so that all the B17 stuff I recorded isn't uh, in MP4. So that's been uploaded that, that's been put into DaVinci and made as one long clip so lots of different clips all put together as one long clip then uploaded back into my computer so I can put it into iMovie and then edit it so that's a faff it's going to take up more time than I need it, it doesn't take up a lot more because it's quick in and out um, up, my upload speeds and download speeds are, are, are fairly good so but it's just a, a, another another hassle. So eventually I will migrate to all my editing being in DaVinci, which means you might find um, a bit of a change in the style because I will uh, I will discover new uh, ways of doing things eventually. Um, and things like titles and stuff like that will uh, possibly, uh, possibly change their format. I'm pleased to say that DaVinci does have um, a title format that um, fits with my Model Kit Stuff logo because my Model Kit Stuff logo is actually based on uh, an I, um, iMovie um, title box. So the Model Kit Stuff at the top with the line and, and uh, Model Kit and line and stuff comes out of iMovie and that's where my logo got created from. So I need to carry that on because that's my, my identity and uh, what have you. Um, but that they have one that, that looks to be the same. Whether it'll perform the same with the drawing the line first, I don't know. Um, I've got lots of playing to do, but, but the plan now is that we will migrate from iMovie to DaVinci, but I need to get my head around it and know what I'm doing. At the moment, I can't even cut a clip. I, don't, I can't work out how to cut a clip. Whereas in iMovie, it's intuitive. In DaVinci, it's not, because there's so many options and I, I watched a bit of a tutorial and there's different ways to do this. I don't want different ways. I just want the one simple way. So 
I'm not um, I'm not a big techie person. I'm not technically minded. Um, you know, I, I, so I've got I've got a lot to a lot to get my head around because uh, the trouble with a lot of tutorials is they talk at ease about things that they know about, but they're not necessarily things that I know about. So when they talk about, so if you want to put, so you can put this different file type in. Well, what is that different file type? And well, how important is it? And what does it mean? And and all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, lots to learn. It's a minefield. So I'm sort of, I, I don't know how long that'll take. Probably, probably months. It's not going to be quick. Um, so that was one thing. And then, of course, uh, memory cards, my SD cards. Uh, this camera that you, you're watching me on takes two. And I've been able to set it up so it'll fill up um, card A and then it will go over to card B. Um, and I've got around about um, four hours of recording time on each card due to the card size. Um, so, um, but the cards I had, one of them, uh, recording time were on, on it from blank was six minutes. Holds hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographs, um, but it's not big enough for recording. So I had to buy some some cards and they're, they're, they're not cheap. Someone recommended I got a one, ter one terabyte one. Uh, yeah, have you seen how much they, they cost? Uh, no thanks. Um, the, the truth of the matter is, if I empty this at the end of each recording session, should be okay. Or so I thought, because a new thing that's popped up last night, and I haven't got my head around it at all, is uh, with my two, two cards in, my little screen um, is telling me that I've got four hours recording time. Great, okay. Um, then I recorded some stuff, and that went down to three hours and 40 minutes left. Great. So then I uploaded that, took the, the, the SD card out, uploaded that, wiped it off, put it back in, and the camera doesn't see that that's been removed. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Uh, I, you know, am I, can I only use these cards once? I mean, that's not viable. That can't be right. So there must be something I've got to do to, I've got to reinitialize the, the, the card every time I put it in. See, Tons to learn, I have no idea. It's not like switching your iPad on and pressing record. <laughs> it's certainly not. Um, I will learn it, I will get my head around it, I'll make these revelations, but again, this is time, and that time eats into everything else I'm doing, uh, and with trying to recover those videos as well, oh, um, it just means that we might see a slowdown of content coming out over the next few weeks while I get my head around everything. But you will be so much more better off for it. Um, yeah. So that's where we are with the camera. Um, lots going on this week. Um, so let's talk about what happened last week first, shall we? Okay, so we started the week, well, I suppose it started on Sunday with the box opening of the camera, because um, we weren't doing a B17 update um, that week. Um, then we moved on to the Infini Sanders, that's right, I'm trying to remember. Um, so we focused on the sponges um, and talked about that. Um, so the last one, um, which I've still got to record, will come out in a fortnight's time will be uh, these ones, the, uh, the the metal ones, I forget what they call them, um, but these, um, they're basically photo etched metal with sticky back um, adhesive um, backed uh, uh, sanding paper. So uh, we'll be, we've got that one left to do and then that completes um, the Infini Sandy, Sander videos um, that, that I intended to do. Um, then we had Endeavour Part 9, uh, which saw you starting to see the build-up of the, the, the cabin. Um, I think the cabin is built up over three videos, as memory recalls. Um, I, I've, done, I've now done the two uh, skylights that go with it, um, and we've reworked the stand so it's presentable as a display stand. Um, so you're about three videos behind, but you're going to catch up to two videos behind because we're going to do Endeavour 
every week for the next three weeks so that I can alternate the B17 build and the Endeavour build because they're appearing in the same week. So we're having a very busy week and then a bit more of an empty week. Um, so just sorry, one, one sec. Um, so what we're going to do, it, it, what I wanted to do was align that. So rather than stretch it out so when you don't see Endeavour for a few weeks, you're getting a bit more Endeavour. Um, so aren't you lucky? So that was an Endeavour 8, I think it was. Yeah, Endeavour 8. Um, and then on, so that was Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, Eagle. That's right, Space 1999 Eagle, which was a gift from Wendy, and I've not heard from Wendy for quite some time. So um, she was um, popping up on a Friday and, and what have you, and uh, I've not heard anything from her for a little while. So I'm hoping everything's all right there. Um, but yeah, um, reviewed the Eagle. Now, that then leads me nicely into uh, what are we going to build next? Well, I'm going to leave you hanging because we need to talk about what you watched last night first, which was Bow Fighter 8. And much to your surprise, and to mine when I was editing it, that isn't the last episode. Um, so uh, we did, I think it was Landing Gear, as I remember. Um, I record this before that goes out, so I'm trying to recall what I edited a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there is enough material left for a, a, another video. So we'll we'll do that. That will absolutely be the last one. I will condense it if needs be to make it the last one because fundamentally I need to move on with the builds. Um, so we've got the Shah B next, but what I'll actually do is I'll do the B17 live stream builders launch, uh, which will be my first ex excuse to use this camera for live streaming so that will be massively interesting um so yeah um that's sort of the plan so um what we'll do is we'll we'll launch the b17 um, and then we'll have a three-week rotation i think uh for six weeks and then we'll go back to our two-week rotation on the builds so currently it's sean horst then um, Beaufort, um, then it's going to go um, uh, Sean Horse B17 uh, uh, Matchbox build, um, and then I think Matchbox will be two builds, and then when the Matchbox is completed, we'll go back to uh, Sean Horse B17 alternate weeks. Then when the B17 finishes, um, we're going to do the uh, uh, tempo. Now, uh, that has moved on in my head. I've been thinking about how I want to present that. Um, so the tempo is, um, uh, I, I want to do it end of the war and I want to do it a bit distressed and maybe ditched on the side of the road or abandoned or something like that, end of war. And I wanted to sort of show it sort of it forlorn and uh, you know be obvious to the viewer that it was abandoned. So we're going to do a little diorama. I'm going to put it on a little base. Um, I've got a cobbled street um, that's clearly out in the country with some uh, felled trees. And um, I've used the base on a previous model and I've now taken the bits off that model and displayed them separately. And that base is now free to be reused. So we're going to put the tempo on there. But to show that it's abandoned and to give you the impression that this is late war, because uh, it's, a, it's a sort of a domestic German vehicle, you wouldn't really see it outside of Germany. Um, I picked up some figures of um, British uh, soldiers um, walking along the street, one of them on a set of bagpipes, which I thought was quite cool, a bit unique. I've not never painted bagpipes before, so uh, something different uh, as per the theme of, of the channel this year. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think that'll be nice. So we'll have a street scene with um, soldiers uh, walking along the back edge of the street with this tempo in the foreground. Um, and the idea will be that the soldier, soldiers will draw your, light, your eye to the tempo and then your eye will go back to the guy on the, the bagpipes at the front marching along. And that'll give you an idea that this is abandoned and, you know, maybe it's 
broken down or something like that. And that gives me an excuse to weather it. That could have been there for a year or six months or something, and it's it's gone a bit rusty and, and what have you. Or maybe we've got an opportunity to put some bullet holes in it or something like that. Don't know. It gives me lots of things to play with, but that's the basic idea. We're going to put it on a base. It's going to have uh, four or five figures on the base, and the tempo will be centre stage, weathered, and um, uh, a little bit stranded and, and forlorn. So that will be a lot, uh, a lot of fun, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, to doing that. It's only a small kit, so we've got plenty of time to mess around with paint effects and stuff like that. Then we have to do something else. So, something else. I asked you what that would be as a bit of a thank you for all the support. And although unpopular with some, and actually less popular than many, Sci-Fi won. <laughs> um, I, why? Well, because Sci-Fi had the majority of votes in that one column. I, mean, I could have done the, right, well, more people voted not for sci-fi than sci-fi, so we'll take sci-fi out and rerun it again. But you lot are quickly get bored of constantly doing polls. So um, sci-fi it is. So I've then asked you, um, what do you want? And that's been running for um, a week now. And sci-fi is the clear uh, uh, winner. And within that, a bit to my surprise, I'll be honest, um, the Space 1999, Eagle has been most popular so so far as I record this. I'll be reviewing it again in the, in a few days' time and see where it settles because that's slowly being whittled down by the others. I thought maybe the Enterprise build might might win, and uh, there was part of me going, "Oh dear, the Enterprise might win," because uh, my, my head's not right in in the space for doing that right now. But if that's what you choose, that's what we build, and no doubt when I start getting in to the lighting and electrics and stuff, that would be something different and a bit fun. But, um, yeah, the the um, Star Wars kit is not done as well as I thought. So let me just show you that. So the Star Wars kit is this one, uh, the um, B-Wing Starfighter from Bandai. It's actually a click-together kit, um, and I built their... Um, uh, at at walker uh, it was beautiful and this is another beautiful kit and it comes on a stand and you can pose it in different positions on the stand um, but what i'm really interested in is doing the weathering and it's one of the more unusual looking uh, vehicles if, if it's possible to say that from uh, star wars uh, and i really like the uh, off center uh, look with the cabinet that, that rotates and all that um, so I thought it would be fantastic um, to to have a go at that. So, but I was surprised there's not more love for that. But anyway, um, I'll be switching this. I mean, it's Saturday now, so I'll probably be making the decision over the weekend. So um, you've probably only got a short time to go and vote if you haven't. Uh, what you need to do is go to my uh, main channel page, go to community, uh, and you'll see it there, and you can you can have a vote. Um, on which one you would like so there you go that's the the Star Wars one anyway um, at this moment in time it's looking like we'll be building the Space 1999 Eagle so it was quite timely that that was coming up for um, first impressions because I had it for a, for a little while um, so yeah um, that should be a lot of fun shouldn't it so on the modeling bench this week was the B17 um, and we got not as much done as I hoped because um, because of uh, recording with the camera and setting the camera up and getting my head around the camera and things not being right with the camera. Um, so yeah, so there was there was all of that going on. Um, so yeah, I, I got some done. I'm not going to show it you um, because I've got um, the B17 update tomorrow the group build update and i'll show you where i'm up to in there so i'm not going to do that here i've got too much to talk about anyway right then so that, that's what we did on the modeling bench uh, we did some endeavor we moved that forward um, and this weekend we'll be back on the shan horse i'm looking forward to doing some recording in the new camera on the shan horse because i want to get up close and put in at the moment i'm putting photo etch on um, so um, the 
the uh, scuttle uh, eyebrows are going on and some hand irons and stuff and though, though I've already filmed it um, on my iPad I can film uh, more of it on this and, and then pick and choose my clips so that will be interesting um, so yeah Sean Horse um, I want to get to the part with with that where um, I can start laying down some paint very very soon and that leads me very very nicely into this so when I was initially talking to gallery about um, uh, showcasing some of their airbrushes um, they said well which ones would you be interested in so uh, I listed three and um, the first one was the one that you've seen um, uh, come out as a review, the entry level one. Um, the second one you will see on Monday, which is the, the Mobius, uh, which is their upper level one. And um, I compare that to the uh, Hadron and Steamback um, Infini CR Plus 2. Um, so I'm not going to say anything. You can go and watch that video um, and uh, what have you. Now, the video that I first put out has gone um, that, uh, really well in their eyes, and I know that they've made um, 20 sales of airbrushes, or 20 individual sales, there might be multiple airbrushes in, in that, uh, on the back of my video. Um, So they've sent me the third airbrush that I said I was interested in, and this couldn't have come at a better time. So this is the swallowtail, and you can see there a swallowtail butterfly um, on the box. And um, the, the swallowtail is um, a different airbrush to anything I've ever had before. So I'm very, very interested in trying it. And the reason I wanted it was because it had a 0.5 needle in it um, and I thought that would be really handy for painting large holes but this is a trigger airbrush so it's a completely different airbrush than I've had before um, and I've not played with it yet but I'm really impressed with the with the features and the quality already. So I will be filming a, a tool review of that and we'll be using it on the Sean Horse. Now I thought it came with a 0.5 needle. It turns out it comes with three needles, one of them a 0.7. Um, and in addition to the um, the uh, what you get in the box, uh, I've also picked up uh, a new nozzle end for it, which I don't know, I think it's on, yeah. Which you can just see there. Um, and that allows you to do um, different spray patterns. So basically what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to do like um, a, th a thin line of paint and go across my hull and lay down paint in a very um controlled and even fashion so i'm looking forward to having a play with it um yeah you can do all sorts of paint effects with it and and stuff um which could be interesting for all sorts of uh different little projects but this i wanted for painting big holes and um but it also has a 2.3 needle in it so it'll do detail as well. Now, how easy that is to use when you're not holding it like a pen, whether you can do the detail work, work quite as well holding it like that, don't know. All things I've got to try. I won't do a tool review on this until um, I've had a play with it and we've put paint down on the Sharnos tool. So I want to move that along and this is going to help me. So um, a big thank you to Gallery for sending me the, uh, another one, another airbrush um, free of charge to review. And um, again, I will... Um, point out that there is uh, the agreement is that I'm honest and I have given them feedback on both of the airbrushes 
which they've taken on board uh, um, quite nicely. So I've made some suggestions on um, improvements they could do and uh, just little things they could do and they're going to put that into their future development team. So that turned up this week. So that was in the nick of time. So that's great. Let me get that out of the way. Um, right. This isn't new. This isn't a stash ad. Um, I showed you this a while ago, the uh, CSM uh, Armstrong Whitworth um, FK8, but I forgot about it. And I haven't done the first impressions. Um, I found it under my desk when I was tidying up and um, I've clearly put it in there, which is not where I usually put them. I've got like a, a magic door over there out of shot, which I can open and stash things that I want to hide in there. Um, and I usually put my kits waiting for review in there. And this one, um, I should have reviewed it last year and I didn't. So um, I'm, going to, I'm going to record this week um, the review of this, the first impressions of this, and squeeze it into the pipeline. Um, I've got some things I don't want to move, but um, it doesn't really matter when it goes out. So um, you, you might see this April or May, because um, I've got quite a long pipeline of first impressions currently, which is a good place to be. Um, so yeah, I can't believe I've not done this, because I was really excited about it when I got it, and it's a lovely, lovely kit. Um, from from what i've seen but we need to do it in depth and have a close look and we might find some stuff that makes it less than lovely but i doubt it somehow so that is why the armstrong whitworth is in there this however is a stash ad um, which i've had three four weeks now maybe um and i'm only showing it you now because i've had other stuff to show you and you know spread it out i've got something to talk about um so this uh, i haven't had a dragon kit for ages and the last dragon kit i had was a was a ship i have built uh dragon um uh, armored fighting vehicles before now uh, this is the british heavy tank conqueror mark ii um so early cold war tank and uh, really really uh, a nice little kit i think um got loads of images there of what you could possibly get in the box um, comes with link and length tracks it's got um, it's got rubber parts in it so this little skirt here is rubber um, so yeah, that'll be interesting as well um, so yeah um, I had a quick look in to check nothing was damaged and it looks like it's going to be a nice kit and it's something a bit different for me because uh, it's not World War II, which is usually where I go for my armoured uh, fighting vehicles. I think the last non-Second uh, um, World War vehicle that I did was probably the Ferret, wasn't it? Uh, which was another British tank. So, yeah, uh, it, it, it'd be something different. I don't know when I'm going to build it. It says Smart Kit. don't quite know what that means. Um, and I don't quite know what Black Label means. But... Um, yeah, um, I picked that up in a sale and got it half price in one of the January sales that someone was was clearing uh, clearing kits, and that was one of them. So, um, yeah, um, looking forward to that. So, another stash ad, another first impressions. All good. Right then, as always, um, despite the fact that we talk a lot about people being uh, negative and uh, people being you know difficult with creators and you know uh you, you sometimes come across people that google something and then write what, what they've googled out so that they can come across as an expert the world's full of strange people um but yeah um despite all of that actually this community the modeling community um, the YouTube modeling community is mainly made up of really nice, friendly people who are always up to help you out. Um, and I'm proud that almost all of my comments are really positive ones. And um, I like to help people out and people like to help me out. And, th and that's a great thing. Now, this channel is self-funding, as many of you know. And what that means is that the revenue that the channel uh, creates, whether that be from uh, uh, video advertising, from buying merchandise, um, from 
uh, or from making donations through PayPal or Super Thanks or Super Chat, all of that comes into the channel and it allows me to buy kits um, for review, buy tools for review, um, and it allows me to build the channel, um, which uh, means better equipment, like a new camera, um, better lighting, and so on and so forth, so that you get a better experience and you get better quality videos. Um, and it also means that if a real special model kit comes along, I've got the funds to do it because I don't use my own money on the channel. Um, that is now, the channel has to stand on its own two feet. So, so it's really important that we maintain the revenue and there are some very special people who chose to donate um, over the, the last week or so. And if you donate, with the exception of buying merchandise, I will know who that is. And I will give you a mention right here, right now, in Table Talk. So let's do that. So, um, right, John Cadenhead, uh, a, a real thank you to you, sir. Um, you put a very large donation in through uh, Super Thanks. Um, I get about 60% of what you've donated. YouTube will get 40%, so they'll be happy too. Um, as always, if you're considering uh, a donation and you want the channel to get 100% of it, then use the PayPal link in the bottom of this video and the bottom of any of my videos. There is a link. Um, you don't have to have PayPal. Um, you, you can um, use that link, put your bank details in and transfer uh, through that link and it'll just go into my PayPal account. Um, and I use PayPal for making my purchases, so it sits there as a fund for me, for me to then uh, spend for the channel. So that, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Nick Andrews Faulkner, thank you very much for your donation this week. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, Paul Model Monkey donates pretty much every week. Uh, a massive thank you to you, sir. Um, uh, your ongoing support of the channel is special and he's also building a B17 part of the group build so go and check that out. Uh, Captain Charlemagne, um, thank you. Um, I get lots of support from you, buddy. Uh, really nice to see. Also has a channel and you should check that out um, and a regular contributor as well. So I don't do membership and I don't do PayPal. Uh, sorry, I don't do, um, what's it called? Buy me a coffee. Um, and I don't do Patreon, which is what I was thinking of, um, because they they need a little bit of time to manage, and I haven't got that time. I want to keep the videos free for everyone. Not everyone can afford, not everyone's prepared to, to donate. They're quite happy to grab a freebie, and that's fine. It's free for everyone because I want as much access as possible. Um, you know, I, I like sharing what I do. I enjoy doing this. I'm quite passionate about making the videos now. Uh, that's something that, that's that's grown, and that's why I want them to be as, as good as I can make them, and we're, we're doing this effort on better editing and better camera um, shots and better photographs and what have you. So thank you to you guys for the contribution this week. It makes a big difference. I'm always very grateful for any contributions uh, whatsoever. Um, it goes a long way to keeping the cameras running and making the channel as best it can be. And, and in a few years time, um, I'll hopefully I'll retire and this will become my full time thing. Um, and then we can really go to town. Um, we can speed up the number of kits that we get through in a year um, and, and what have you. We'll, I've got some special plans for, uh, for this and for wooden model ships when I get to retire, I'm a few years off that, yeah. Still be there, that's the plan. So, thank you to you guys for the contributions. Shall we talk about what's coming up next week? I'm just gonna flick to plan. So, um, let's see, uh, buh, 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 buh. right, so on Sunday, we've already mentioned it, the B17 group build update number four, which will give you a full view of where I'm up to ahead of seeing the first um, build. Um, then on Monday, we have the review of the Mobius airbrush. If you use an airbrush, you've got to watch it. If you're thinking about getting an airbrush, you've got to watch it. If you've got an airbrush and you'd like to upgrade your airbrush, you've got to watch this video on Monday. Um, absolutely uh, phenomenal airbrush i'm massively impressed but 
um, go and have a look at the tool review. I, um, in the tool review, I don't use it, but I've used it since on my B17 and I'm massively impressed. Um, so that's coming up. Then on Tuesday, we'll have Endeavour Part 10. Um, and then on Wednesday, I've got a vintage Airfix, but I'm not going to tell you what. So look out for that, quite an interesting one. And then that gets us to Friday and Sean Horst number eight will be out. So yeah, um, I will have one or two other videos going out, the remastered videos, uh, trying to get two or three out a week. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see some more of those. And as always, if you could do me a favor and go in, hit the like button um, so that they get picked up on the radar again. Because unfortunately, my first Sean Horst video has got something like uh, 400 views and 40 likes, whereas it had 4,000 views originally, um, which is a real shame. But there you go. That's what happens when people mess you about in it. Um, so, yeah, that gets us up then to next week's Table Talk. And who knows what will be in that? I, I don't because I pretty much uh, talk about what's coming into my head at the time so. so i thought it might be interesting to uh show you another project last year or might have been the year before now we did the kitchen i, I lose track but well, this year we're doing the living room so this is our living room as it currently is um but we're about to change it all so uh, every last bit of this is is gonna be pretty much different um we've just bought or i've just bought a new TV stand which is uh, this here which is um, uh, really nice it used to all be on there um, but we've got different plans for that I'll talk about that in a sec so uh, yeah that's uh, that's the first bit that's new ready for um, ready for the new living room so we're going to decorate new wall colours have a new flooring put in because you can see we've taken the fireplace out and um, replaced it with a bear. <laughs> Looks like a bear. Um, and there's a big hole in the floor, so that needs to be um, sorted. So the flooring is going to be sorted. Um, so we've got a quote for new flooring, so that's coming. We've got a decorator, um, and he just needs a time. Um, I have also, oh, by the way, who remembers Logan's Run? Excellent program. That's the TV series, not the film. So uh, we've got uh, new sofas coming, so uh, these are going to be replaced and coffee table we're keeping because I like it, um, but we're going to change the lamps, I think stand lamps is the way we're going, um, and we're getting rid of that unit which has all of my uh, LPs in, and we're going to put that in there, put the hi-fi lower down and the LPs will be on there, this is sort of the plan. And Paul wants to get rid of that as well, but I think it'll make a great display cabinet for some models. So we might just relocate it upstairs, but um, yet to be, um, well, I've yet to convince her that's the right thing to do. Um, so yeah, I'll give you some updates as, as we go. There's one of my previous builds. That's the Caldercraft HMS Pickle. I didn't build the clock. Clocks a family heirloom, which unfortunately I absolutely love this clock, and um, I used to play in it as a kid, and then one day it dropped on the floor, and it's not worked since. But um, I didn't always intend to get it repaired, but I must do at some point. So um, it's a, a lovely, a lovely clock. I would think built in Germany, um, but yeah, came out of a stately home where one of my ancestors worked. So yeah, there we go. This is the um, the living room project about to begin i will give you more updates as they come along so i think that is it for this week i think we've covered off quite a bit um so i'm going to go away and read some more user manuals and you can go away and do some more uh, model building so until then enjoy your modeling have a great time and i'll see you very soon bye for now hi and thanks for watching you can support the channel by hitting the like button and if you haven't subscribed please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee 
So if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming, then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You will find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.